Have you ever found yourself wondering whether you're editing a video or mixing a video? Is the music track too loud? Is it too quiet? Have you ever gotten feedback from a client where they uh, say, hey, uh, we can't understand the dialogue. The music's just too loud. Or, hey, can we bring up the music? The piece is really lacking some energy. Or have you ever watched a video and just been so pulled out of it, distracted by all that's going on with the audio? It's up, it's down, it's all out of the place. I just can't even focus. Let's dig into that. Hello, my name is Ryan Monette. I'm a post-production audio engineer for Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And right now I wanna tackle the topic of mixing a voiceover or dialogue with a music bed or music track underneath it. Now, this can be tricky business. I know because it was for me when I first started mixing for post-production. You've got a lot of choices and decisions to make on how do I get the dialogue or voiceover to sound present while still maintaining energy with the music track underneath or how do I not get the dialogue and the music track mumbled or jumbled together and have separation and clarity. There's a lot going on and a lot to deal with here. But over the past few years, I've discovered some tips and tricks that have really helped my process in how I mix dialogue or voiceover with the music track, still maintaining the separation so you can hear the two distinctively, but also maintaining presence in the dialogue and also energy in the music track. So right now I'm gonna share with you my process on how I like to mix dialogue or voiceover with the music track underneath it. And yes, I'm gonna get carried away and I'm also gonna share with you how I like to edit and mix voiceover and my approach on how I like to level an audio mix for video. Let's go. So I'm just gonna embrace the obvious. Yes, this is a boom mic. And the ironic thing is I will eventually be mixing myself from this boom mic for this video but in this video, I'm mixing myself in this video. It's like mixing Inception. It's fine, don't worry about it. So what I've got here, I've opened up a template that I've created, which I've labeled Talking Heads, basically a template for pieces like this, where it's voiceover or dialogue and a music track, just simple kind of two track things. I can expand it if I need to. It's basically got everything I would need for this type of mix. So in here, I've already created basically a mock session. I've got a voiceover track, which I recorded myself, and then I've got a music bed in here. Very simple setup. I've got a track for the voiceover, which feeds a dialogue bus. It's a stereo bus. The reason for that being, if I had more than one voiceover or dialogue track, I can just duplicate this track and put the other voice on there and it'd all feed the bus. And then later on, as you'll see in my mix window, I have the option to EQ, compress, multiband, to kind of blend those multiple voices. Going back to the edit window, then I have a track for, which I've labeled track, for the music track. I'll put the music track there. We'll get into volume automation later, and then I have a master track, which is where I'll do my final leveling, mastering. So let's kind of dive in here with step one, which would be editing the voiceover. I've already kind of done a little bit of work, but I'll just whiz by through it. So if we solo my voice here, Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much. So I might want to do something like get rid of this breath up here, add a little fade. Time to watch this video. I hope that you... I might get rid of this breath and like the little mouth crackling. Watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. And I've got a little bit of dead space here. I'm actually going to save that. I'm not gonna add a fade yet. What I might actually do is just cut this and kind of set it to the side, add a fade here. Much for watching. Great. You'll see what I do with this a little bit later. I got a fun little trick for you. Now, one thing I like to do, if you should have the plugin, I love to use the Isotope Mouth Declick. It is just that. So, in my voice, you may hear subtle mouth clicking noises. I just like to uh, bump that up a little bit, render this out. That'll smooth out the dialogue so there's no mouth clicking. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Sounds super smooth, no, none of that mouth noise. Awesome, cool. All right, so that's edited, that's good to go. Now, the next step would be mixing. If I just unsolo that and go from the top. Hi, this is Brian Thank you so much for taking the time. 
All right, you can see we've got some work to do here. The music track is incredibly loud, can't hear the dialogue. You can see on the mix window here the reason for that being everything's at zero. We've got nothing going on. So what I'm going to do is just kind of work through my process on, first of all, I'm just going to mix mix the voiceover. Maybe get that sounding good before we start blending the two. So what I'm going to do is solo this again. My first step in the process of mixing a voiceover would be just to add a glorified high pass filter. So I've got this set to 100, nothing too crazy. And that way it's kind of keeping some low content, but you'll see later on I filter that out anyways. This is just a glorified high pass filter. From here, I like using the Fab Filter Pro DS, a beautiful DSer. You can select the range here of which you want to DS, set the threshold, how much you want to, like the range you want to uh, DS. Uh, it's got a nice uh, look ahead. Uh, right here. It's it's amazing. It sounds incredible. So I've already set this to how I want it. I'll just unbypass it. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also... So it's taking care of those S's very nicely. My next step in mixing a voiceover or dialogue would be then to EQ. Now, you may be seeing like how I have a, uh, in this template an order of which that I like to, uh, my signal flow on how I like my plugins. This is always changing. This is just what I found that works for me best right now, the order of which I have these in, but I've experimented with um, doing the EQ before a DS or putting the compressor somewhere else in the chain. This is just how I have it right now. Feel free to experiment with whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way to do it. So I've already got this EQ kind of honed in on where it's best for my voice. I've already kind of mixed ahead uh, to save some time. So I'll unbypass that. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. So we kind of got rid of some of the low mid here, uh, another high pass filter, kind of cleaned it up a little bit. From there, after I've done these three things, I will then go on to add a subtle compressor with a mild attack and fast release. This particular plugin has an analog feature which I have off, otherwise it'll just add noise. I'll unbypass this and you'll see just about how much compression I'm doing here just to subtly smooth it out. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Okay, so we've got that. From here, sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't, but I have a multiband compressor. So I've got the option here to use this multiband compressor where I can smooth out some frequency ranges a little differently with uh, separate attack and release times. I'm gonna use it for this voiceover just to help smooth it out a little bit. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. For me, it just brings it to life just a little bit more. And you can see it's hardly doing anything drastic. From here, since this is more of a, a voiceover, voiceover as opposed to dialogue for a film where you're seeing the person talking, I treat a little bit differently. Since this is more of like a radio spot type of voiceover without a visual, I'll treat it a little bit differently and I might compress it differently. So in this next step, I use another compressor and it's for that purpose of, of more of like the broadcast kind of sound as opposed to dialogue for film where you wanna do hardly any compression at all. They're two different beasts, but this is, I'm just showing you the process in which how I'm doing this particular spot. So from here, I've got this SSL compressor. Again, nothing too crazy. I've got a, hmm, not too fast, not too slow attack, fast release, four to one ratio, and it's it's just tickling the meter. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, just very subtle, and I've got one dB of makeup gain. From here, I have the option to, I have these two plugins right here. I've got this RX Spectral Denoise and the RX Dialog Denoise. I can use whichever one of these I want. Sometimes if it's a noisy situation, I may use both and it may clean it up really well. But for something like this where it was just tracked in a studio, I'm gonna go with the spectral denoise. Now, this little blank spot here that I told you we'd save for later, can you think of what I'm putting together now? 
if we want to denoise this the noise floor in this dialogue, wouldn't it be great to hear just the noise floor by itself so we can analyze the noise floor so this special denoise plugin will know exactly what it needs to filter out? So that's why I've saved this for this purpose. So I'll just play it, it'll loop, and you can see here how it's analyzing this noise floor now. So what I'll do is I'll hit learn. So it's learning the noise floor. And so it's got it figured out. So I'll stop this, and move this aside, mute it, get rid of it, don't need it anymore. But now if I play that over this. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content it's just ever so slightly cleaned up that noise floor, brought the voiceover to life just a little bit more, created some separation. After I'm done denoising, I have the option now if I need to EQ it just a little bit more. I'm fine with it right now. So from now, I will go on and I have this L2 as a, as a limiter, but I also use it as a little bit of makeup gain. And I'll show you why. You'll see right here, I've got this WLM meter. It's white because I have a, a third monitor, which you can't see, where I'm always looking at this guy. You'll see it's set to ATSC A85 dialog. It's basically the dialog loudness meter standard of which dialog should be for film or broadcast TV. I'm always keeping an eye on this when I mix dialog or pretty much anything really, just so I can make sure it's sitting in an average listening level. So what I'll do, is I'll play this dialogue. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspiring. It's a little low, so I've got this limiter here and I'll boost it up just a couple dB so that we're living right around this green region, which is, which is good, it's what you want. Minus 24 LKFS is your average loudness for dialogue that you want. So I try to keep my voiceovers or dialogue living around this green. And uh, this L2, should I need to bump up the gain, I can use it for that to have the dialogue living in a healthy range. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. So that green check, that means we're in business. And real quick, I know I touched on this on my last video tutorial on how I make sermons for broadcast at Elevation, the importance of loudness. Loudness is different than just your metering. So if we look at this loudness meter, Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much. That is very different from any one of these meters. These meters are, you can set them to different things in Pro Tools, but right now they're essentially monitoring, metering energy, whereas this is metering loudness, perceived loudness, which is very different than physical energy. So this is what I was talking about in the intro on leveling and why sometimes you may have seen YouTube videos or videos in general where someone's talking, they have a music track underneath them, and then they ramp up the music afterwards and the music is way crazy loud. And you're like, holy cow, I need to turn that down. That music's really loud. So this is my little trick on how I prevent that on perceived loudness. I'm always keeping an eye on these loudness meters and I'll get more into that towards the end when I master on how I maintain the overall loudness for a piece in general, if we do need to ramp up music after the voiceover. All right, so our voiceover is in good sounding shape. Now we can get on to blending the voiceover with the music track. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the Hmm, okay, well, the voiceover may sound good, but let's get to work on blending it with the music track. The first step in this process, there are, let's see, I'm gonna say four-ish steps that you can take in blending voiceover or dialogue with the music track. You can accomplish what you need really in the dialogue separation while maintaining healthy energy in your music track by using any one of these four steps um, by themselves. But if you use all four of them, it just creates even more so of that separation and energy that makes it really glue together so perfectly. So the first step in the process is just overall volume. So basically what we can do, if I just play this track right here, I can just bring the overall volume of the track down. Hi, this is Brian Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to 
Okay, so we can hear the dialogue now and we can hear the music track. We brought the music track down so we can understand the dialogue, but there's still a little bit of competition. There's certain words where we still may have to guess what the dialogue is saying, where it's not clear and precise. So aside from bringing the volume down, the next step in which we can do, and I've already got the plugins ready to go, is EQ. So when you think about the voice, the voice is made up of frequencies, like any sound. Our voice has a, a certain range of frequencies. I obviously cannot go so low to <laughs> share the same frequencies of, of a low E on a bass guitar, or I can't go so high as to talk as loud as the frequency content of a, a splash cymbal on a drum set. So what I wanna do is in this already produced two track music track, essentially what I wanna do is in this frequency spectrum range, I'm gonna kinda notch out some frequencies where the presence of my voice lives best. So I'll show you how I do that. I'll uh, loop this track and unbypass the EQ, and I'm gonna boost some EQ bands and search for where they conflict with my voice the most, and then I will dip those down. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. All right, so right there, we've already got something a little bit better. I've got the volume down to where I can hear the music track and also hear my dialogue. And I've also carved out some frequencies in the music track so that my voice can pop through. I've got this kind of high mid range of uh, between one and 2K where the presence of my voice is, but then I've also got in between 500 and 250 where I've got a little bit of body in my voice where you can also get some of that as well cutting through as well. If you were to just do these two things, volume and EQ, you would be honestly good to go and get a good separation of your dialogue with the music track. But we can do a couple more things to just make it a little bit better, a little bit more energy in the music track without having to kind of sacrifice so much equally across the music track. So the next step, what I like to do is use a multi-band compressor again, similar to this C6, which I used on the voiceover. However, this one, as you may see, is a C6 sidechain. Sidechain basically meaning I'm using this key input triggered by the voiceover to tell the multi-band compressor what to do. So you can see on this dialogue bus right here, I've got a send called VOC6. That is the key input of this C6 multiband compressor. So essentially when, and I've got all these bands set to external. So these bands set to external will say, okay, I'm going to compress based off of the external signal. So I've got this multiband compressor on a music track, but it's being triggered and compressing based off of what the voiceover is doing. And I've only got just a couple bands selected here because I don't want to compress the entire music track, all the frequency contact. I don't just want to put one, one band compressor on it and compress the entire thing. I don't want the low, low lows that are lower than my voice range to be compressed because then you'll hear it pumping. Or same thing with the highs. I don't want to talk and then have the, the hi-hats or anything like that. So that's why I've got just a couple bands of this multi-band compressor uh, unbypassed. And those are same as the EQ in that same range where my voice is present. So take a look at this. I'll unbypass this. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content. So you can see how it's compressing based off of when I'm talking and not when the music's doing anything. So what I'll do is I'll go through and solo each band that I want, such as this mid range right around where the voice lives. And I'll set the threshold 
basically to where it's kind of just tickling this. Since this is such a wide band in the middle, I don't want it drastically pumping the this entire band. It'll be subtle. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the I mean, that's minus 60 B would be an extreme and this isn't passing that. Next, I'll go kind of in this range where I might have my S's. Now I know I DS those, but this is an area in the voice where you wanna have just some of that, the air. And this might help some of that separation between like cymbal and the, the air of your voice, just in some, some of those instances. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. So nothing drastic. And then on this C6, I've got these two outer bands that can get more specific for more narrow ranges. So I'll utilize those in such a way that I did the EQ as well. I'll find those certain frequencies where my voice really pops and have those triggered so that those are ducking right when I'm talking. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan. Pretty crazy when you see how I bypass and unbypass this C6, how much of a difference it makes. It's very subtle, but it actually does make a big difference. Whereas when we just automate the volume and notch out the EQ, we are permanently removing that content from the music track. You know, we can go to town on that, but then there's not much left of our music track. And this, using the C6 sidechain technique or any multiband compressor with a sidechain, is really helpful to maintain some of the energy in the music track uh, and not permanently get rid of it. So it's, there's often been times where I've not even used an EQ and I've only used a multiband compressor because notching out those things in the EQ means that frequency content of the music track is gone forever, no matter if I'm talking or not talking, it's just gone. So something like this, if it were a piece where I talk a little bit, and then the music plays and then I talk a little bit and the music plays instead of having to like re-automate, which I'll get into later, volume and whatnot. Something like this is perfect because only when I'm talking, it's dipping that frequency range of the voice. And then when I'm done talking, it's back there. Again, like the last two steps, if we stopped here, we would be good to go. And this voiceover, this music track, we could blend it, it would be great. But there's one Kind of two more steps just to make this just a hair bit more, ugh, as Tim Allen would say. <laughs> All right, so for this last step and a half, I've got two plugins that essentially do the same thing, kind of. I've got both plugins made from Waves Center and the S1 Stereo Imager. Now this starts to dive into the stereo field. So if you think about voiceover or dialogue, that's, that's one channel, it's mono. And in the importance of film or anything like that, dialogue is always king. Your voice is always gonna need to be right down the center, center of attention, center of your focus, right down the middle. Unless you're doing anything weird, stereo effects or anything like that, dialogue is king, is always gonna be, need to be in the center. And so if we've got a mono dialogue or voiceover track, but then we've also got a stereo music track, you can start to mess with that in the stereo field in that you can create separation. So we've created separation within the frequency spectrum, but now we can look into our, our sonic. We've got two ears, we hear in stereo. So what we can do is with the music track, so earlier I was referencing this, this visual will say uh, in frequency content, low, high. Well, now I'm gonna use it from left, right, my left, your right, my right, your left, stereo field. So if we've got the dialogue and it's gonna live in the center and we've got this music right here, essentially what this center plugin will allow me to do is I've got a, a fader right here labeled center 
And within the preset, I already kind of have it dialed in so that this center plugin on the music track, I'm essentially dipping the musical content within the center of the stereo field down. So I'm creating some, some a, like a lull in the stereo field that the dialogue can sit in a little bit better. I'm just kind of like whoosh, creating a nice little, little pocket for that dialogue to sit in. So essentially that's what I'm doing here by dipping this center down. I also have these potentiometers right here, low, high, punch, and you'll see to the left here, center, and then to the right side. So essentially I'm putting this musical content, I'm putting more of the low end energy, the high end energy, some of the, the oomph, the punch of the music. I'm kind of just pushing those to the side to create a parting of the seas, if you will, for the dialogue or the voiceover to really be present right in the center and not have any of this stereo like mishmash of inf information, uh, create just more sonically uh, a separation to us. E even if it's super subtle that it's like, borderline subconscious. We're gonna notice it ever so slightly. Every little bit that we can do will help so we can comprehend the dialogue better while also maintaining energy in the music. I'm gonna toggle this back and forth and you'll hear maybe a subtle difference here. Um, it, it, it'll help to hear this difference more if you're listening on headphones or decent speakers. Um, but let me play this for you real quick. This is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. So I hope you could hear just the little difference that that made where the dialogue just in the stereo field, you almost feel like the music when I when I bypass it kind of collapses in on the voiceover. And then when I unbypass it, it's like, it kind of gets out of the way. So along with this center, I like to just add one little bit more of just finesse just because I can and I uh, old habits die hard. I don't, again, much like anything, I could stop there and we'd be perfect fine. But just for funsies, I like to throw on this S1 stereo imager where essentially on the musical track, again, playing with the stereo field, um, I'm, I'm just making it wider. I'm almost, again, kind of just like pushing the musical content to the sides to give more focus to the dialogue in the center. So again, this is very super subtle. I'm just widening the music ever so slightly. This is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much. So again, there you can hear almost as if when I bypass it, the music will kind of collapse on the dialogue just a little bit. Now we're creating even more of, the, of that separation. So now that I've got, you can see all of my plugins here are unbypassed. I, I've, I'm using all the plugins that I have set up in my template. So now you would, you would think we're good to go. But because we've created so much separation now with our EQ, our, our multiband compressor, our, our stereo imaging, now we have the freedom to bring this music track back up. Our, our first initial step was to bring the volume down that blends the dialogue and the music as best as we can. But now that we've created even more separation and intelligibility between the two, we can bring this music back up uh, maybe just a little bit, maybe a lot, who knows, we'll see. And the way that I like to do this now We'll get into um, how I like to monitor, how I like to listen. This has a huge factor on how you mix and blend the level of dialogue or a voiceover with the music track. And how this is done determines how you are listening and also keeping in mind the audience that's going to be listening what you are mixing or producing. So a little tip I've learned in the past is that when you listen to anything, musical content, anything, we perceive loudness when we listen to things differently. We, we perceive intelligibility different at different levels. So if I'm mixing this at a, at a standard, like healthy mixing level, if I actually turn the volume down on my monitors and I listen at a lower level, I will be able to hear and perceive relationships much differently than I would if I had the volume cranked at a super loud level because then everything kind of just becomes noise. So a little tip is when you're mixing and you want to hear, uh, if you want to see if the relationship between your dialogue and music is, if there's enough separation to where you can understand the dialogue clearly, what I would do is however you're listening, whether it's bringing the master fader down 
or if you have some sort of like interface with a monitor um, control, what you do is just play it, turn it down. This is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also. In so in doing that, after we've done all the things with our plugins on the music track and listening, I can understand the dialogue well. I might be able to bump it up just a hair here. Let's see what we got. This is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much. Okay, I feel good with that. So now another thing that you can keep in mind too is some people may be listening to whatever you're mixing in mono on one speaker. And because we did so much with the stereo field, we wanna check the compatibility or the, the translation of how it would sound if our stereo mix got folded down to mono. And that also helps me establish and make sure the relationship between the dialogue and the music track is also good. That's another final little check to make sure that that relationship is right. So not only will I go through to make sure that the leveling is good by bringing the volume down, listening at a low level, but also at the same time, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a monitor control station here where I can sum my mix to mono. You can also do this in the box too if you want by just taking your pan pots and just throwing them right up the center. So what we'll do here is I'm gonna play this again and I'm gonna dim it in my control room and I'm gonna sum it to mono, make sure the relationship's good and healthy and if that sounds good, then we're good to go. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also. Awesome, okay, so listening at a low level, some to mono, I was able to understand and hear the dialogue clearly, but then I also heard the music track in there as well, and I'm hearing some of those musical hits. I'm really happy with this now. So I would say our relationship between the dialogue and the music track, we're good to go now. Are we done? Not quite. So if we wanted to make this a finished piece, we'd have just a little bit more to do. And this is where we get into automation. If you look at this musical track here, you'll notice we've got a little bit of the space in the beginning here. And then we kind of ramp up into like uh, a musical montage at the end where the voiceover is done and we want to bring back the energy of the music track. There's two steps that we can do to really bring this back to life. Now that our music is kind of set to a level where it should live underneath dialogue, if we want to bring this energy back, there's two things we can do. Naturally, we can automate this volume line here, and that's what we'll do first. There's an extra little step after that to really bring back the presence and energy of the music that may be lacking, because remember when we talked about EQ, we did EQ and notch out some frequencies. And remember the difference between EQ and a multi-band compressor where the EQ, the content is notched out permanently. So we're gonna fix that here in a second. But let's start by automating the volume. So maybe for fun here, we wanna have this music ramp up and then boom, right when it hits, the dialogue comes in and we kind of fade down into a nice blended level that we have it at right now. I already have the, the level set perfectly. So what we'll do is we'll, We'll start this fade right after you'll see this musical hit right here. So we'll create a little node here and then you can see my, my dialogue kind of is very heavy here on this first phrase, this first syllable. So what I'll do is I'll kind of match that with the fade and by time I get to a normal natural talking level is by the end of the fade. I'll bring this up to, we'll just guesstimate there. See how that sounds. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much Okay, I'm cool with that. And we're gonna do the same thing, but in reverse to the end now. And you may th be thinking like, okay, that was a little arbitrary of, of why I decided to have the volume there. I'll get into that here in a second. So I'm gonna take this and add a fade at the end of my phrase here. One thing I would encourage you to uh, try and be creative with is how you incorporate these fades and the key here would be subtlety and you don't wanna necessarily notice them. In the intro of this video, I talked about audio distracting you and pulling you out of something. I can miss the whole point of the content of this if the audio is all over the place. So we wanna create something that is not distracting and that flows and feels natural. So if you look at this piece right here, I'm finishing this phrase and we want our destination, our, our, our volume, the energy of the music track to come back up to its full life. You'll look and you'll see we have a hit right here. 
that's almost like a perfect destination of to, if we're gonna ramp up this music, something to aim for. So I'll create a little node right here, and that'll be our destination of reaching the pinnacle of this track's musical energy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna fade this right after I'm done talking, because then that, you would notice that. Let's just give that a listen. See, just for kicks and giggles, what that sounds like. Watching. See, that sounded kind of awkward. Talk, and then whoop, we're going back up. So what we want to do is we want to essentially create a crossfade where as I'm finishing, then the music's coming up. So it, it feels a little bit more natural. So what I'm going to do, undo that node, and I'll maybe start it as I'm finishing this little bit right here. Now you wanna play with this so that this last little phrase, we don't wanna lose that. If you do run into issues with that, you can experiment with how you automate the music track or you can also experiment with maybe automating that, that last little syllable up just a hair. Which maybe we'll do here. All right, so we've got a note here as this phrase is finishing up, our destination will be this musical hit. But where do we land this? Naturally, you would think, okay, if we're at minus 13.7 dB, well, don't we just bring it back up to zero? Only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Well, that just doesn't seem right. And if you look at the meters here, while I'm talking, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. And that might be something that you hear today, whereas if you're mixing by the meters alone, you're only looking by your eyes, you're like, okay, my voice over my dialogue, I've got the fader at zero, that, that's looking good, and so like I wanna return the music to, to zero, right? Well, but then if you look at your master fader, our levels are all over the place, and then again, remember the, the conversation we had about loudness. So when it comes to me making decision on where to place the level of this music as we ramp back up, this is where I get back into loudness. You'll notice here, I've got this loudness meter plug-in. It's white because I have it pulled up on this third monitor. So I'll bring it down. This is something I'm always keeping my mind on and, and keeping in front of me. Much like we had a loudness meter on the dialog bus, this one is set to a preset where it's analyzing ATSC A85 all. So it's analyzing the entire mix rather than having an algorithm more specific for dialog or vocals. So I'll be mixing and I'll be looking at this the whole entire time. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also... So as you can see now, our relationship is great. Our entire mix, we're averaging right in this perfect, ideal, loud, perceived loudness range. Watch what happens when we go into this music and it goes back up to zero. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so you can visually see, according to perceived loudness, that it is far greater than the rest of our mix. Also, the strongest and most powerful tools that you have are the ones I encourage you to use the most. The most powerful tool that you have when it comes to mixing, editing, right here. That's right, so this is a tool, this loudness meter is a tool to help us essentially visualize what these are telling us, perceived how we understand and how we hear loudness. Meters, right now, these are telling us energy. This meter is telling us loudness, how we're hearing it. So this is a good visual representation of what these are naturally telling us. So. If you don't even have a loudness meter, that's fine. Essentially what I'm saying is these are your best tools. You can hear how the mix sounds fine and then if we ramp this back up to zero because we're going back to our mind and our eyes of like, oh yeah, let's put it back to zero where it should belong, you'll hear with your ears, that doesn't sound right. It sounds a little bit way too loud now. So what I'll do here is I'll set this fade to a level that best matches according to this loudness meter. So we'll bring it back down and see, we'll just see what that sounds like. So much for watching. Okay, so maybe if I have it there at minus 3.5, that looks like it's a good like average loudness. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, I'm liking that, that's perfect. And you can hear it sounds natural as we crossfade 
once I'm done with the phrase, the music comes in. It's like, it feels like it's living in the same space. It's not jumping out. It's not random. It's not pulling you out of it. It feels natural and right. Now, remember what I was talking about, the EQ, how we permanently notched out this content. Well, let's let's bring that back. Why not? Because we can, right? I mean, this this track, aside from the volume that we just changed, is still set to settings that are complementary underneath dialogue. So if we want the full presence and energy of this music track to come back up, say we're, we've got a nice B-roll, a montage shot here underneath, and we really want this to come to life, let's put that frequency content back in the mix. What we can do with this EQ, and most EQs, if you're using plugins and Pro Tools, have this feature where you can select what you want to automate. So I'll go right here, and I have all these options of this plugin to which I can automate. So essentially what we want to do is bring the gain back of these bands that we dip down. So I'll go to band four gain and we'll add this to the plugin automation. Band six gain, add. Band seven gain, add. Cool. We got that. And you'll notice within Pro Tools on this plugin, they even turned red. So you can see that they're ready to go. They're ready to be automated. What we can do is in our automation lane here, see this plus? I can hit that. And now you'll see that we have those options in our automation lane. So I'm going to add those. Great. All right. Now that we have those, much like we automated the volume, let's automate that frequency content back in. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to make each band automate back in exactly at the same time because then, again, that might be something that we notice. It might be less subtle to hear all of this come back all at the same time. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of spread them out a little bit here. I might make this one a little bit more gradual, and then I might make this one a little bit more abrupt. And what I'll do here is I'll just bring these guys back up to zero, back to their home, back to how this song was intended to sound. All right, there we go. So now let's take a listen. But also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so you'll notice now that we could probably hear that difference now. You can see here in this automation lane that before, and then we go up, whoom, we're back at zero. So it's flat the way it was intended to sound frequency wise when this track was mixed. But you'll also notice that when we played this back, okay, now maybe it is sounding a little bit too different from this relationship when it was underneath the dialogue and now on its own. So this is where we will go back to our friend the loudness meter. Again, if you don't have anything like this, just use these guys. You can adjust the volume now to sound a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna pull this up, I'll play it, and let's find a good blend. No. Thank you so much for watching. All right, we got a green check. That means we're good to go. Let's listen again and see how it sounds. But also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. All right, look at that. I think we're in business. I would say we're just about done, wouldn't you? There's one last step here to make this guy ready to go, ready to ship. Now, before I explain this last step, I just want to, in case you've been noticing, yes, I do have here an Isotope plugin uh, after the loudness meter. Essentially what this does, it's set to a preset called Laptop, where in these two bands, again, it's a multi-band compressor, but within these two bands, it will compress just these mid-range frequencies that on smaller speakers, such as a laptop or a TV, they might sound a little too heightened. So I, for the most part, always put this plug in with this setting on my master fader, my master bus, because I know that 
the majority of my mixes are going to be listened to on small speakers such as an iPhone or I mix for TV, so TV speakers or even a laptop, like it says. So this is a good kind of a, a helpful mastering tool for me because I know where most of my mixes are going. Another way you can do this, say if you don't have this plugin that I like to use, again, using the best tools that you have, you'll see I have this third monitor here. That's not a monitor, that's actually a TV. I have it so that my interface, I have a signal also going to my TV. So normally when I mix, I'm listening to my monitors, but because I know as I mix TV, people are going to listen to it on a TV, I wanna know what they're hearing, what they're listening through. So what I'll do is when I'm mixing something, much like I'll dim the signal to hear its relationship or I'll sum it to mono to hear how that translates, I also, I use that word translates. That's what you're doing here. You wanna hear how your mix translates to different platforms in which your audience is going to be listening. So what I'll do is when I'm mixing something, I'll toggle here on this monitor switch to listen to my mix on a TV and hear how it sounds. And from there, I might even throw an EQ on the master bus and make some tweaks and, and, and notch out some frequencies that sound a little bit too heightened on a TV. Again, that's what this preset does for me. I've kind of tweaked a little bit to what works best for me and my style, but that's just something that helps me out. This is nothing that you need. This is just an added little bonus tip, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So we're gonna move on past this now to the final, final step, and that is this L2. Again, you'll see it's white because I always have it pulled up here on my third monitor to always be looking at. You'll notice that if we play our mix, you're looking at our master fader and this L2 but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. So if you want this to be on the internet or pretty much anywhere aside from TV, because TV has strict regulations on where it's mastered and the level that it needs to be at, you're not gonna want your mix to be quiet. And again, we were mixing based off of perceived loudness as a tool for relationship. If you were mixing for TV, that's the standard at which you actually need to print your mix at. But now that this is going to go on maybe a radio ad or, or online, we have space to fill here. Now we can master this so that our dBFS, our full scale dB is at zero. It's mastered limited at zero. So I've got this limiter here limited at 0.1, so it doesn't go past that. But I've got this threshold here where I can basically use it as makeup gain. So I can bring the overall energy of this mix up. But also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much. Okay, you'll see here that we're catching a little bit of these, these bigger transients, the, the high and some of these hits when we bring the music back. So I'll tame this just a little bit. So maybe it will catch a little bit of those, but nothing more than like one dB. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, I think that's great. I think we got ourselves a good mix. I would say we're done. Now you could, if you wanted to, depending on where this is going, you might even, put like a master bus compressor on this ever so slightly. Like if you're doing something for radio, you can experiment with that. But for our general purposes and for I'm, I'm guessing and assuming and hoping most of yours, I would say that this is good to go. Look at that. We've got ourselves clear, beautiful dialogue. We've got great separation between dialogue and the track. However, we still have got energy and presence and tangibility with the music track. Um, and then we were bringing it back up and the piece sounds cohesive. It doesn't sound too drastic and different when the music track comes in. We've got ourselves a solid piece here. It's at a great level and I'd say we got ourselves a beautiful little mix here. 
Let's take a listen one last time. Hi, this is Ryan Monette. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you find the content not only helpful, but also inspirational. Thank you so much for watching. All right, that'll about do it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some new insight and new ideas on how to mix dialogue or voiceover with the music bed underneath it. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you or head to my website, ryanmonette.com. Head over to the contact page and it'll send me an email. It's as simple as that. All right, friends, thank you so much for hanging with me. We're done here. Now get out there, start mixing. Take care.